What's up, my internet friends? Let's get you guys up and running on the Final Cut for iPad app in this quick start tutorial. Okay, when you first open up the app, just hit the plus sign in the bottom left corner to start a new project. Let's give our project a name. And let's take a look at those timeline settings. By default, they are an automatic, which means that the timeline will take on the properties of the first clip that you drop into the project, or you can hit the automatic button and select custom. And now we can make some adjustments here. We can change the resolution. We can change the orientation from portrait to landscape. No square or file formats quite yet. The color space can either be an HDR, which typically is probably what your iPhone is shooting in if you're doing a lot of iPhone video, or you can be in standard dynamic range and we can choose the frame rate. The important thing to know is that once you create your project in the Final Cut for iPad app, you can change all of these parameters except for the frame rate. The frame rate is the one thing you cannot change. I'm gonna switch this back to automatic and let's hit the continue button to get started. Now it's going to ask us if we wanna import media from our photos, from our files, record with the camera, or just start with a blank project. For now, I'm gonna start with the blank project just to show you how to import once you're actually opened up in your project. You can import media through this button right here and you can import photos from your photos library or you can import files. And here it looks like the finder on your desktop app. Now, how do you get media into your iPad if you didn't shoot it with your iPhone or your iPad, let's say, and it's not living in your cloud? You can connect a card reader if it's got the right connection or a hard drive right to your iPad. I'm gonna plug in this hard drive and I can open up the folder with all the media I wanna import. Just select the top one and then you get these other options at the bottom. I'm gonna select all and I'm going to hit the open button. Now you'll see my media starting to import really fast right in my browser window here. It's important for you to know that at this time, the Final Cut for iPad app actually sucks in all of your media to live on your iPad. So once you're done importing your media, you can disconnect your hard drive or card reader. Before we go any further, let's take a quick tour of the user interface. Here in the top right, you can see all of our media. This is your browser. This left screen is going to be your viewer where you can see your project come together. And at the very bottom is your timeline. Let's start taking a closer look at our clips in the browser. So you can just select an individual clip and you will see it highlighted here in the viewer. We also get this elongated view down below where I can grab these yellow handles and select the part of the clip that I want to use in my timeline. That's one way to mark your ins and outs. The other way would be to hit the play button here, watch it back in real time, and then hit this button for in and that button for out. Once I'm happy with my selection, I can long press that clip and drag it with my finger into the timeline. Let's make another selection. Again, I'm gonna mark my ins and outs. And this time to drop it into my timeline, I'm going to use this menu right here. The overwrite button will drop my new clip over the original clip in my timeline, wherever the playhead is present. And it'll trim that first clip automatically. I'm going to undo that. I'm gonna move my playhead back to the middle of this clip so you can see the next option, which is to insert at the playhead. So I'm gonna to switch to that function and hit the button. And you can see what it's done in my timeline. It has split the original clip into two and inserted it between each half. I'm gonna hit Command Z again. I'm gonna cute my playhead again to the middle of that first clip. Let's go back to this menu. I can connect the clip at the playhead, which means it's going to drop my new clip on top of the original clip. And now if I move these clips around in my timeline, the top clip moves around with the bottom clip. Let me undo that one. I'm gonna cute my playhead again to the middle of this clip and let's switch to our last option, which is append to storyline, which means that it'll drop my next clip after the first clip. So the first clip is is not modified in duration at all. I'm gonna add a few more clips to this timeline real quick to show you some other features. Let's focus on the timeline now so I can show you some more things you need to know about it. If I wanna zoom in on the timeline, I use a multi-touch gesture, which means I'm using two fingers and I can zoom in or zoom out in that way. You'll also notice that the timeline is magnetic. If I take this last clip and try to drag it further down in the timeline, it automatically snaps 
back into place. But you can override this feature. If you hit this button here, you can turn on the position tool, which means that when you grab that clip and slide it down, it's going to create what's called a gap clip. So just a black space in between those two clips. If I wanted to delete that gap clip, I need to select it, turn off the position tool, and then hit the trash can and it's deleted. This icon next to the position tool is the snapping feature. What this does is it allows you to very easily find the space between clips. You'll see that my playhead kind of jumps to those cut marks. If I disable that, it skims more smoothly. I like to have snapping on. Another thing to know about the timeline is that you can select multiple clips by long pressing in the dark space above your clips and then lasso dragging around them. Now you can see I have two clips selected here. If I wanted to apply effects to both of them at the same time or move them in unison, and I know they're selected because they have the yellow highlight around them. And the last thing you need to know about navigating in the timeline for this quick start tutorial is about the jog wheel. The jog wheel can be found under this icon at the top right of the UI. You're gonna get this rectangle. Do you see this? Here on the side of your screen, by default, it's gonna land on the right, but you can move it to the left if you prefer. And then to open it up, just hit the black circle. And now we can use the jog wheel to scrub through our timeline. If we enable the position tool while we have the jog wheel and then select a clip and then select this double-ended arrow, I can now trim that clip frame by frame in the timeline and create that gap clip. If we select a another clip and connect it to that clip. Again, on the nudge function with the jog wheel, I'm changing the position. Now you can see by the waveforms on these clips that there's a lot of ambient sound on these clips. If I wanted to lower that ambient noise, I could just select a clip, hit the volume button here and dial it down. You can see my waveforms shrink. I'm gonna close the jog wheel so you can see my audio meters here on the right side of the screen. And when I play this media back, the full volume clips are pretty loud, but the lowered one registers much lower in my audio meters. Now let me show you another really important part of the UI that we can't view until we open it up. And that is the inspector window. Just hit the inspect button here on the bottom left corner of the UI and you get the format menu which lets you adjust the speed of your clip so you can slow it down or speed it up. It lets you adjust the opacity of your clips. And the last option is color conversion. So if you were working with some HDR video on your timeline and some SDR, it will automatically fix those color spaces for you. So everything looks really even. The next tab over are your transform tools. This is where you can punch in tighter to a shot if you want. And there's a couple different ways to do that. You can just grab this wireframe here in your viewer, or you can change the values of the scale here by just clicking on one of these numbers and manually typing in a new value. You can adjust this rotation by changing the value of the degrees here or by using the slider or in the viewer with the wireframe. The crop tools allow you to crop your shot and the distort tools allow you to skew your shot. The next tab over in your inspector gives you more control over your volume and it has some audio enhancements as well, like voice isolation, which uses AI to clean up background noise. If someone's speaking in one of your videos, it's a great tool. And the next tab over is your video effects. This is where you can add some special effects to your videos. One way to add effects to your videos is to hit this plus button. And there's a small menu of tools here that you can apply to individual clips. However, most of the effects can be found under this menu. And you can see that there's many more effects here in the browser. The one you're probably going to be reaching for the most is this one here called color adjustments. It's some basic color correction features you'll probably reach for a lot. To apply the color adjustments or any effect, just select it in your browser and then select the clip you wanna apply it to and then hit the apply button. And now you can see in my inspector, the color adjustments has populated under my effects tab. To customize the color adjustments, just select it and then use these sliders to make your adjustments. If you want a closer look at your viewer, if you feel like your playback window is too small, you can close the browser and zoom in on your viewer so you can get a closer look as you make adjustments. 
Let's add some transitions between these shots. So I'm gonna open up the effects browser again, and we're going to navigate over to transitions. I can browse the different transitions here in the browser window. I'm going to use my fingers to zoom out on my viewer so I can get a closer look. And then to preview a transition before you apply it to any clips, just select it and hit the play button and you can see what it does. Once you find one that you like, select a clip where you wanna add a transition and then use this menu to either add the transition to the start, to the end, or to both. I'm going to add it to the start and then we can play it back in our timeline and see if we like it. Let's add a text overlay to this project. So just hit the titles browser and you can browse all of these different titles. I'm going to select the marquee option. I can preview this text animation by selecting it and playing it in my viewer. And I can bring it into my timeline by dragging it and dropping it. To modify the text, just select that title, make sure your inspector is open and hit the format menu. I'm going to select the first text layer and here is where I can modify what the text says and the font. I can go back to the format menu and select the subheader text, and I can modify the position, the color, and more. One other thing you need to know is that Final Cut does have some music cuts that you can pull right into your project. You can find them in the browser window under soundtracks, and just click one to preview it. Guys, while I'm browsing these music files, if you like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Once you found one you like, you wanna connect it underneath the rest of your videos. So just head to this menu, connect at playhead and hit connect and it drops it under all of my clips. I'm gonna close the inspector and use the multi-touch gestures to zoom out. And I wanna trim up the length of this music cut. So to do that, I'm going to switch this menu here and select edge, click on my clip to get this big handle at the very end, and I can trim it to the very end of my video. And if you look at those waveforms, the music now perfectly times to my video length. Once we're satisfied with our video, it's time to share it. We can do that here by hitting the share button at the top center of the UI. And we get some options here, obviously. You can export the entire video. You can export just the audio. You can export the specific frame, which your playhead is queued up to. So in this case, it would be this gentleman. Or I can send it to Final Cut to the Mac app as a Final Cut Pro for iPad project. Let's select video. And here are all of the options I have for exporting my video, including codecs, resolutions, file types, color space, and more. Let's hit export. And we can choose where we wanna send this video. I'm gonna airdrop it to myself. So there you go. Those are the basics about getting started with the Final Cut Pro for iPad app. I've got a hacks video dropping tomorrow. If you didn't see my review of this app, there's some other tutorials in there that I think you might find helpful. More content to come both on the Final Cut desktop app and the iPad app on this channel. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos for you and I'll see you again.